A Volcano in My Tummy, Helping Children to Handle Anger, by Alien Whitehouse and Warwick Putney. My brother said I hit him, but I didn't. My father growled at me. I got mad at my dad. When I get angry, it's like, I've got a volcano on my tummy. A story by L, aged 9. Children often have problems with anger. Teachers often have problems with anger. Parents often have problems with anger. Why? Because we're afraid of anger. It may mean that someone is out of our control. It may mean that someone won't like us. It may mean that someone acts violently. This book is about living successfully, healthily, happily, nonviolently, with motivation, without fear, and with good relationships. Put aside your fear and have some fun. This book gives activities, stories, articles, games, and learning for all. It is designed for schools and community groups. Parents can easily adapt the lessons for home use. We invite you to use the activities for your children, build them into a program, and enjoy anger. Specifically, we aim to help children to be aware of when they become angry in the early stages so that they have some choices about what they do with their feeling, to distinguish between emotions and anger, to find whether they really need to be angry, to learn how to take time out and keep safe, to learn alternatives to physical and verbal violence and express themselves positively and assertively, take advantage of anger as a motivator for change, to identify recycled or dirty anger and personal triggers, to discover the ways that they have learn to express anger and to choose new ones, to learn how to handle other people's anger, to, de to develop their self-esteem, to learn how to deal with authority. We hope all who use this book will enjoy the anger and benefit from it. Key Concepts Anger is an emotion. Anger is good, it's healthy, it's normal. We need anger to protect and motivate ourselves. Bottled up anger can be become explosive, depressive, and bad for health. Violence or abuse is behavior. It can be learned and unlearned. It is not okay. Violence has many forms. Verbal, ethnic racial, domestic, institutional. Power or control tactics. <laughs> Power or control tactics which frighten people are abuse. Abuse can be physical, verbal, sexual, emotional, or to property. We are all responsible for stopping violence and abuse. We need to know what we want and how to ask for it. Other people's anger is their problem. Letting others solve their problems is healthy. Good self-esteem means we have less need of anger. Time out is for everyone's safety. It stops abuse but doesn't solve the initial problem. Safe expression of anger is healthy. Stating what makes us angry is healthy. We need to learn the words to express our anger in a constructive way. Learning what triggers our anger makes it easier to control. Owning our feelings is healthy and reduces conflict. Behind anger, there are feelings of hurt or fear or powerlessness. We need to know the words to express anger. We don't always get what we want. Good listening helps dissipate anger and increase self-esteem. Children learn how to behave from adult models. They learn more from what adults do than what they say. Labeling people is not okay. Children have rights. There should be consequences for abuse. Other people's abuse doesn't have to be accepted. Parents and teachers have extra power to use justly and responsibly. Adults and children are fearful, are fearful of anger because of negative past experiences. It does not have to be so. Anger rules keep everyone safe. The anger rules. It's okay to feel angry, but don't hurt others, don't hurt yourself, don't hurt property. Do talk about it. Anger is okay. Parents too feel angry. Every time we express our own anger positively, we give our children a lesson in anger management. As parents, we can help our children by learning how to understand our own feelings better. You might ask yourself some of the following questions. How do I react when I get angry? How did my parents react when they get angry? My, what happened at my school when someone was angry? What did my teachers do when they got angry? What did I learn about anger as a child? How did I feel as a child around angry adults? 
what do I want my children to know about anger? How might they learn from this? Anger is a feeling and feelings just are. Anger is okay. Abuse and violence are not okay. Somehow, though firm, I mean, somehow, through firm, fair, limit setting, good communication and love, we can learn our children, uh, we can let our children know this important message. Every time we do this, we contribute to the establishment of a more peaceful society and world. Especially for parents and caregivers. Being a parent or caregiver can be satisfying and fun. It can also be challenging and frustrating. Children's anger often provides us with a challenge or a dilemma. How do we allow our children to express their feelings without getting abusive? How do we cope with the variety of advice we are offered? If we in turn react abusively, our children learn that such behavior is okay. We learn what we live. So what can we do to see that all our needs are met? Children need to say children need to learn safe limits to their behavior for their own sec for their own security and for the safety of others. They also need to know that their feelings are understood. When this happens, a child feels validated and is helped to develop a healthy sense of self. When setting limits, we can use the T statement format on pages 45 and 46. I feel when something happens because I would I want would like or we can be very direct especially effective for little people we don't hit hitting hurts i won't let you hitting i won't let you hit me hitting hurts we don't bite biting hurts we may need to remove children from the person they are hurting or if it is us hold their hands eye contact is very effective but don't force it to let children know we have understood the feelings, we can offer one of the following. It sounds like you're angry. Boy, you look furious. If we are wrong, our children should have an opportunity to say so. This kind of communication models for our children a way of coping with their own feelings and provides vocabulary for doing so. Little children soon learn that what they are feeling has a name. They can use that name to tell people how they feel without acting it out. It also gives children a chance to tell you what their problems are. You might give them a further opportunity by adding, and then, or, that must be hard, or, tell me some more, or, do you want to tell me about it? Like adults, children do not think too well when they are fired up with anger. They don't listen to too well either. It might be better to say, we'll talk about this when you are feeling calmer. When that happens, you might say, I want to talk to you about something important. Where shall we go to talk? Then you can use an T statement to express your feelings about the problem and invite your child to suggest a solution. By the time we reach adulthood, most of us have developed methods to stop ourselves going over the top with anger. Children need help to learn this. This may need someone to stay there. This may need someone to say, stop, firmly, or provide the calmness they don't have at that point. In time, they will make that control part of their inner wisdom. Until they do, they will need yours. This is particularly true with preschoolers who sometimes throw tantrums. Tantrums come about for many reasons, but toddlers are not reasonable when they are having a tantrum. Retaliation, are just, retaliation just makes things worse. They need an adult to be there to keep them safe and to hold them when it is all over. Children can be very frightened by the force of their own anger. Parents need a safe way of expressing their own anger about the situation, and they need support and someone to talk to. A friend, a parent, a family member, etc., who will support them. We can often prevent tantrums from happening by childproofing the environment or organizing our day so that children don't get overtired and get adequate attention. This is not an easy task for a busy parent. Parenting is hard work. Workers need time off. Sometimes children are angry with one another. We can assist them at a time like this by stating what we see. I see two children fighting over a ball. Not taking sides. I only know what I see right now. Separating the children if there is danger or violence. I see someone about to hit someone else. Someone will get hurt. 
You sit there, and you sit there, seeking it to find out the reason for the fighting. Reasons for fighting are many. Children may feel unloved just at that moment. They might feel put down, or they might be just plain hungry, tired, or bored. Anger can be a positive, motivating force. Anti-apartheid campaigners in South Africa were angry when they worked to get rid of apartheid. Charles Dickens was angry when he wrote to protest about living conditions for the poor in Victorian England. William Wilberforce was angry when he worked to abolish slavery. Key Concepts Adults and children are fearful and anger because <laughs> Adults and children are fearful of anger because of negative past experiences. It does not have to be so. Parents and teachers have extra power to justly to use justly and responsibly. Children have rights. We need anger to protect and motivate ourselves. And let's end there. Yeah.